Okay, so you guys like toogenesis. So it, it starts during pregnancy. Um, so you have a period during pregnancy where you start to secrete uh, colostrum. You guys, when the placenta is delivered, there is a dramatic decrease in estrogen and an elevation in prolactin. And that, in combination with demand for breast milk, is going to create the breastfeeding um, patterns and the amount of milk mom gets. So it's a supply and a demand system. So when people say, you know, I really didn't breastfeed because I never got any milk in, um, many times I think to myself, it's because you didn't breastfeed, you never got any milk in. See so guys, if the baby is away from mom, we can do things to cause uh, the body to believe there is a stimulus there and that's by using a breast pump um, that will help mom's breast milk to come in um, so it's supply and demand system the more you breastfeed the more breast milk you'll get in oxytocin is super important uh, the milk ejection reflex it's the letdown reflex um, so oxytocin uh, when there is a letdown there is a contraction of the uterus and it helps with the letdown of milk um, so obviously when you go to breastfeed you're going to contract so we always tell moms to void before they start breastfeeding and to have a glass of water um, at their side so they can drink water during the breastfeeding experience um, you can see here where the, um, the stimulus the sucking stimulus triggers the hypo hypothalamus uh, which triggers um, prolactin and that causes a letdown um, it's of course breast milk is the best for babies and we've talked about this it's rich with antibodies with antibodies uh, colostrum which is the first milk um, is very thick and dense and very high in protein lipids um, and nutrients in general um, you'll have that for the first you know we say the first your breast milk comes in your more mature breast milk or more voluminous breast milk comes in in five to seven days um, so you guys we say you know the more you breastfeed the more comes in the more comes in um, a day three to seven somewhere in there uh, you'll have a huge volume come in and that will be the more mature breast milk um, we don't want moms uh, to um, supplement unless it's medically necessary the first three weeks because the amount of breastfeeding she does those first three weeks will determine the amount of breast milk she will have through the duration of the breastfeeding experience um, again this just is the same thing I just said stage one lactogenesis begins 16 to 18 weeks during pregnancy uh, stage two um, when the placenta delivers um, the estrogen dramatically decreases and prolactin elevates in the um, presence of a stimulus to the breast and then stage three is the mature milk um, it says 10 to 14 days um, but three to five three to seven days somewhere in there your mature breast milk comes in you'll have a big voluminous um, but you guys we really want you to we really want moms to uh, refrain from supplementation um, pacifier use um, during the first three weeks and the reason why that is is because the baby then will create the amount of volume the baby needs um, babies suckle for comfort um, and for breastfeeding so sometimes they're hungry and moms give them a pacifier um, we believe in cluster feeding so we want moms to breastfeed every two to three hours but if babies want to breastfeed in clusters we say it's fine they can go ahead and do that um, the uniqueness of human milk it changes with each feeding it's so cool so if you have a premature baby um, you'll have a different breast milk composition than you will have if you have a term baby um, your body makes the milk specifically for the gestational age um, as the baby continues the breastfeeding experience um, the composition of the milk changes um, we do recommend support groups for lactation. They have them at hospitals. We have lactation consultants. Um, the La Leche League is an excellent place uh, for people to get support with breastfeeding. Um, and we also want to promote a safe and secure environment for breastfeeders. Um, you guys, uh, so important that we change our culture um, from a socioeconomic standpoint that breastfeeding is more glamorous. I mean, bottle feeding is more glamorous and it's costly and you can afford it. Um, we need to really make sure that we have a cultural change that breastfeeding is a natural thing um, and the best formula for our babies. So we really need to do a lot of education in our communities. 
how do we know that babies want to breastfeed or how do we know they're hungry so they put their hands to their mouth you know they, they do like this they have suckling noises they try to root so if you have your hand anywhere near them they'll try to root those are all very early cues uh, that the baby wants to breastfeed the baby will only cry for milk in the very very late stages so crying is not a beneficial cue um, again we encourage moms to breastfeed every two to three hours um, and then cluster feed if the baby wants more than that we certainly encourage mom to do that um, positioning and latch is super important so again as I always say we don't want to nipple feed we want to breastfeed so you want to get past the nipple to the areola um, if babies nipple feed it will cause damage to the nipple this cracked damaged nipple can then cause mastitis in the breast um, the milk rejection let down um, obviously we know that's due to oxytocin frequency of feeding every two to three hours duration so duration is um, somewhat um, varied uh, so duration can be anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes some babies will feed up to like 30 minutes we just want to make sure that mom's nipples are not getting damaged if there is an extended breastfeeding period um, these are just some um, positions for babies um, this is uh, cross cradle or this is sideline um, and this one's cross cradle you can see um, and this is sideline this is a really nice one um, for moms who are sleeping or you know who are in bed uh, of course we never want the baby to sleep in the bed with us um, we want the baby to be in his or her own protected bed so that we don't have um, any potential for rollover deaths um, so you guys breastfeeding supplements um, sometimes we do have to supplement them um, if if we have a problem medically uh, so if the baby's really small and is not maintaining blood sugar sometimes we have to supplement them um, other considerations is if we have a baby who's sleepy fussy has slow weight gain has jaundice preterm our late preterm infants are breastfeeding multiple infants sometimes we have to give them a supplement just because they're having a medical issue um, case management expressing and storing breast milk so you guys you when they're in the hospital many times will um, and babies need some um, extra supplementation because their blood sugars are low um, the lactation consultants will go to mom usually she's in c-section recovery and hand express some milk um, to give to the baby and it's nice thick colostrum of course we can pump we've talked about that storing breast milk um, you can freeze breast milk up to a year it's so awesome um, and there's donor we have a donor program at Orange Park um, so if you have extra breast milk you can can donate it it goes to Colorado to the screening um, pro it goes through a screening process and um, hospitals and mothers can get donated milk which is actually medicine um, weaning um, many times moms wean after 12 months and so they just slowly decrease the duration of breastfeeding and the frequency um, and there's milk banking um, so you guys you really got to help tell mom to take good care of herself mom needs to have those extra 300 kilo calories a day um, for her nutrition um, and um, she needs to rest as well she needs lots of fluids and we really just need to monitor her nipples and make sure that she doesn't get a damaged nipple again if there's pain uh, we want her to take the baby off our um, because we know we don't have a good latch let me say one more thing about breast care um, moms don't need to do anything um, for their breasts if their nipples get a little sore initially um, we have a lanolin cream or in the specific brand name is called Lansino um, which can help the nipples to heal um, routinely if mom is having um, difficulty or pain during the first breastfeeding experiences um, we have her expand express some colostrum after the breastfeeding experience rub it on her nipple which is like putting an antibiotic on it and then put some lanolin um, which soothes and eases um, a little bit of the pain um, it's safe for the baby to ingest so it's a great tool for mom nipple to heal and then we just make sure that she gets that nipple a rest for a little bit um, and then the next breastfeeding time uh, she goes on the other side um, so breastfeeding management um, breastfeeding and contraception you guys it's called uh, there's a method of contraception called um, lactation amenorrhea so you guys 
you know that the primary hormone of the follicular phase is estrogen and so when we breastfeed every two to three hours we don't get that big surge of estrogen so it delays ovulation um, unfortunately that only works for four hours so if you go past four hours you can have that rise in estrogen if you go past four hours from one breastfeed to the next breastfeeding um, you can have that rise in estrogen therefore we don't consider it um, a the most reliable method <laughs> so you guys what we say is that we want moms to breastfeed every two to three hours um, and we want them to be on a progestin only birth control um, obviously if there's a rise in estrogen there will be a decrease in breast milk physiologically um, so progestin only uh, is what we recommend with moms who are breastfeeding. Um, you can't breastfeed during pregnancy. Sometimes the supplies go a little bit down because the estrogen elevates throughout the pregnancy. Breastfeeding after breast surgery, we've already talked about that. Breastfeeding and obesity, um, you guys, it ramps up the metabolism. And so moms who are obese, um, this is one of the best things they can do. They have a dramatic weight loss just because of the change. Um, medications, alcohol, smoking, and caffeine. Um, we really don't want you to... Um, to smoke and breastfeed although breastfeed moms who smoke cigarettes um, and feed their babies breast milk um, it's a better outcome than moms who smoke and feed their baby bottles um, or formula so um, if you if they smoke we just tell them you know go outside and smoke never s smoke while you're breastfeeding um, make sure you change your clothes and you don't expose your baby to any passive smoke like smoke in their hair smoke on their clothes um, super important there um, of course no alcohol if someone were to drink alcohol they would need to pump and dump after the alcohol consumption um, and caffeine um, you know it's just the same thing as um, smoking we really don't want moms to have a lot of caffeine and give them to the baby and then herbal preparations um, we uh, there's some herbal preparation preparations that can increase milk supply when moms have some trouble um, so sometimes uh, the lactation consultants um, will recommend some herbal supplementations but on the overall we say not to do that um, sorry so common problems of the breastfeeding moms is engorgement that's when the second breast milk comes in that um, after uh, you know the three to seven days that's when the more mature or more voluminous breast milk comes in and you guys it's just a stasis there's just you, you go to sleep and everything is fine and you wake up and your breasts are huge and tight and hard and painful so that milk has to come out so sometimes you guys we tell them to get into a warm bath to vasodilate out um, to feed the baby frequently and and pump and sometimes hand massage to get that milk out once they get it out they should put some ice packs on their breast or, or something cool to prevent that much um, milk from coming in for the next time you guys this only affects them for a couple of days um, and then after that the milk uh, supply and demand is totally fine and there's no issue with engorgement sore nipples we've talked about that the routine um, nursing care for sore nipples is first of all to evaluate the latch um, because that's what's causing the sore nipple if there's an incorrect latch and they are nipple feeding and not breastfeeding um, that can cause a sore irritated nipple so then you tell them to take the baby off when they feel pain um, and uh, once they take the baby off uh, and they put the baby back on as long as there's no pain they can continue the breast to breastfeed um, after the breastfeeding experience with someone with poor nipples we can't tell the mom to hand express colostrum rub it on her nipple and then she may also put some lanceno on there as well which is a lanolin product which is safe for the baby to ingest insufficient milk supply so say for instance someone had a minor breast surgery and had a duct cut um, we can tell them you know to um, pump after they feed to see if we can increase their supply um, and if not we may have to supplement um, plug ducts sometimes the ducts themselves can get plugged because of the thick colostrum so you guys um, it's pinpoint you can see a red mark on their breast their whole breast is not inflamed um, and so sometimes they have to massage that plug put a warm cloth on it to help um, vasodilate or to dilate out that duct um, so that we can uh, 
so that it will not be painful. And the mastitis, if you if you have an incorrect latch and um, you cause damage to the nipple, um, bacteria can get into the nipple and go to the breast. And so then you'll have redness of one breast and that's mastitis. It makes them very, very ill. Um, it causes flu-like symptoms, fever, fatigue, lethargy, um, joint pain. Um, they just feel terrible. And so uh, we as clinicians put them on antibiotics and have them continue to breastfeed throughout the breath throughout the um, antibiotic administration so you guys a lot of times you'll hear in the lay community oh well she got mastitis so she had to stop breastfeeding um, that is definitely not the the plan of care the plan of care is to put mom on an antibiotic even though uh, there was bacterial um, invasion of the breast there's a lot of antibodies there as well so the baby will be fine ingesting the antibiotic mom is ingesting um, and this will continue to help the baby and the mom get through the breastfeeding experience and then follow up after discharge we want to make sure that they're going to their pediatrician um, and they have good weight checks um, you know how we know that they're getting enough breast milk is um, you know evaluating their eyes and o's so ends um, would be um, the breastfeeding experience and then output we're really evaluating output so on day one we expect one urine and one feces day two two urine and two feces because every single day the baby gets more supply as mom gets more demand so day three three voids and three feces day four four voids and four feces and then five um, five or more super easy to remember um, and you guys can make sure that you give mom the best education um, one last thing is I want to say that um, is that uh, you want to have the mom breastfeed within the first hour after delivery um, because that is what is essential to um, the baby getting on for the first time so you guys at the delivery the baby goes through fight or flight so the baby has secreted uh, cortisol epi nor epi the baby is wide awake and alert and so you guys this is the most optimal time for the baby to breastfeed so um, the baby's alert and then unfortunately after those hormones are gone the fight or flight the baby's going to go through um, some sleep periods and unfortunately um, you know the baby won't be able to breastfeed until he or she wakes up again in a couple of hours two or three hours and so that can be stressful for mom so we really want to get the babies on the first hour um, key points human um, milk is very specific um, it changes every day that the baby breastfeeds which is awesome um, they should be breastfeed within the first hour like I said and every two to three hours thereafter um, Parents should be taught to recognize um, signs of effective breastfeeding, and that's the one one two two three three four four five five um, volume coming. I mean, output um, very important, and the baby is satisfied and sleep and wants to sleep after the breastfeeding experience. Um, it's a supply and demand system. They go through predictable uh, growth growth spurts. Babies do, um, and sore nipples are are definitely caused by an inappropriate latch. Um, commercial formulas are fine. Um, we tell them to buy ones that are FDA approved. Um, and then we just teach moms about how to prepare infant formulas if need be. Uh, solid foods should be introduced at six months. Um, and remember that's because the extrusion reflex is gone. Um, we don't want to give them just regular cow's milk because it's not nutrient dense. So we want to tell parents to, that they need formula. Uh, we don't want them to give them water or any other supplements. Thank you, you guys, and I hope you learned about breastfeeding.